Hello and welcome to this week's uh, live stream uh, version of Truth Proof. So, we've got a great guest on tonight. As you know, it is Connie Willis, all the way from America. Now, just before we get on to the show, with just a little bit of housekeeping to sort out. Uh, we've got, let's see who's in the chat room today. We've got uh, Joe Weeks. Uh, welcome to the show, Joe. We've got Deborah Singleton. She will be moderating the chat tonight, so everybody behave, please, on the best behaviour, and uh, which I know you always are. And uh, Lee Roscoe, welcome, Lee, to the show. Baz Indoors, welcome. Steve071, thanks for coming on tonight, and uh, I'm sure we've got a great show in front of us. Aldo Rain, thank you for uh, coming on the stream. And Don Lodge, thank you, Don, for coming on the stream also. Uh, Space Cadet Lottie, brilliant. So we'll, we've got some uh, great people in tonight's uh, chat room. Uh, Bridget Van Bosch, uh, Ralph Winter, Outer Limits Magazine. Hi, Chris. Uh, welcome to tonight's show. I'm sure there's a few more in there I haven't seen, but without further ado, I will bring on Paul Sinclair and his guest. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Les. Hi, Connie. The crowd roars. How are you? <laughs> we're all good, and uh, it's great that you've spent time, or you're going to spend some time with us tonight. And for those who don't know, Connie's been involved in TV, broadcasting, host of Coast to Coast, Blue Rock Talk, her own show, Creepy Hotspots, and Connie After Dark. So, Connie, welcome to Truth Proof. Thank you. How's my hair looking? It's, you know, it's not radio. I don't have to worry about it. Usually, you know, you just have your little PJs on doing your thing from coast to coast in the closet. No one knows any different. <laughs> ah, well, we're out of the closet tonight. So <laughs> you can start wherever you want. But if you want to tell us a little bit about Connie Willis, not just paranormal, what makes you tick? And then we'll start from your earliest beginnings, your paranormal experiences, if any. I think there will be. By the way. None. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I guess I'm on the wrong show. No. So take a look at this just to have a little bit of fun. So I've got a platter full of uh, Paul had asked if it was spam first, a little pepperoni. Uh, I went to culinary school. So CIA, which is like the Harvard of culinary schools on this side of the world. And uh, so it's thinly sliced pepperoni, room temperature, the oils come out, it's delicious. And my little doggies already smelled it and said, hey, <laughs> I know what you got up there. So I had to give her some. So uh, I might munch a little once in a while, but you're never even going to know it. We'll find out. We'll find no, out. it's all good. <laughs> but I've, um, you know, I've always, uh, I'm just trying to fix this. You know, I got to get my hair cut. There's just too much hair right now going on. Is it looking all right? Am I okay? Because I need yeah, you to fix good. your hair a little bit there too. There, so. I don't mind. So, <laughs> so all my life I've been in broadcasting. I've always loved it when I was... Uh, um, I remember, I mean, before I can remember, I always knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be, you know, my, my sister would say movie star. She wants to be a movie star. I just knew cameras. That's all I knew, you know, and I didn't know what that meant as a kid. Um, but I just knew I always wanted to do that, which was weird because when I went off to college, I remember people and I didn't even want to go to school. I just knew what I wanted to do. I, why do I have to go to school? Yeah. Um, but I remember, um, people in school you know those people in college that continue to go another year another year because they can't figure it out I'm like what is wrong with you why do you want to be in school don't you want to be out doing something that you love uh, but actually a psychic at one point had said you did this in another life that's why you've always known what you wanted to do and I didn't even solicit that question he just turned to me and said boom uh, and it was a guy by the name of Dr. Hoover out of uh, Casadega camp which is outside of Orlando. Um, and if anybody knows about that, it's this community of psychics that you can only live in this community if you've passed tests. And it's really an unbelievable area. It's really, really fun. But, um, but I've always done broadcasting, radio, TV, film, uh, independent stuff, whatever. And uh, at one point, you know, you do these things for ESPN, really great networks. I've been blessed along the way, Paul like ESPN and Speed and uh, 
um, Disney and Oxygen Network and, and UPN Network and some other ones along the way, QVC, HSN. I've been over, um, I haven't done anything actually in the UK. I was asked a couple times, but um, in doing that, I would always have to spit out some other information or some other content that I had to learn good or bad I just had to learn it and spit it out as if I was an expert in it and I thought man I can't wait till the days that I can do something that I'm passionate about so I don't have to study it so much and spit it out and re you know learn something and that passion I thought well what would that passion be and I thought well golly what have I lived since the very first thought I've ever had that I remember and that's these things that we can't explain Yep. And I thought, man, that would be great. And of course, every agent along the way, because that was my work. So you had agents as well. They would say, don't ever, ever do anything like you talk about when we have dinner, you know, which were UFOs and Bigfoots and, you know, and, yeah. and that kind of thing. And, and I was like, why? And they're like, because nobody will believe you right now. You're trusted. Everybody trusts you. That's why you're successful. They trust you. They want you in their home. They feel comfortable with you. That's all like the best you can get as a compliment. And I'm like, well, this is truth. This is more truth than that that product you got me selling, or yeah. or that guy that made all this money. Now he's a you know he's a race car driver because he's got all this money. It's just a little freaking hobby of his, right? You know, I'm like, this is more truth than anything. But you know, so people don't believe that, do they? You well, you had that talked out to you then in early days. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and. Yeah, and, and, and they said you're gonna you're not gonna get as much work and they're right. They were right. In fact, you know Roswell. I know you know Roswell. I was at one of the uh, I went to um, one of the more celebrated ones. It was uh, I don't know if it was a fiftieth or whatever it was. It was one of the ones marked a little bit more special. Yeah. And when I was out there, there was a guy I'll never forget. He was in a wheelchair right in front of me around a whole bunch of people. And I remember there was a network guy that was going to be there and I was going to let him know, Hey, this is my background and I want to do this. So please keep me in mind in future. Um, and I remember saying something about that. And this guy that was, I've never seen him again. I, he'll, he'll always be the man in the wheelchair. He was in this wheelchair. I never saw him before that or after that. Okay. And he said, he said, you don't want to do that. If you do that, you're going to hit brick walls. You're going to lose money. And the what you have right now will all go away. And I just thought, ah, not me. Of course, right? Ah, not me. And it's true. Everything yeah. seems to be, and you are looked upon as a step down. Yeah. And, and to me, and probably to you guys, and to everybody that's here, no, it's a step up. We're yeah. pioneers on a world, you know, you don't have to be a pioneer. Hey, we just uh, found this new land. No, we just found new civilization. We're not even just found them. We're just looking into them. They've yeah. been here uh, most likely before us. I don't know that, but I would maybe. Have, in, my, in my mind, to my mind, that's where I would come from. They've been here long before us. Yeah. And <clears throat> what about your early <clears throat> beginnings then, Connie, your early experiences is there any that you'd like to tell us about? Well, um, I'm, I think you and I are very similar in almost, you know, a ton of ways. A lot of people just study ghosts. A lot of people just study UFOs. A lot of people just study abductions or aliens. And by the way, as you know, UFO people don't always go to abductions or even aliens. <laughs> and alien people and abductees, I mean, they don't even sometimes enter interact and sometimes they don't even look at the ufo part of it so it's crazy across the board and some people are only dog man some people are only bigfoot only, only ghost only, only mediumship it's uh but i look at all of them and it's not like it was it was actual choice it's just how the journey has happened with yeah. me to where this happened this happened and this happened and then uh getting to interview people and i was interviewing people or just talking with people let's just say that get out of the broadcast world because i wasn't doing it for anybody but me because i always wanted to know what did you see what did you hear you know and as i put them together i mean the biggest change for me where i noticed the most of where everything you know fit together with each one of the different uh, entities along the way was when uh i started doing the Bigfoot thing 
and some people took me out to an area where they had encounters all the time and i was i mean they talked to me for hours paul before i ever went yeah. and set me up and prepared me and all this stuff and told me all this information so i just thought okay cool i'm going with you let's go and the bottom line of it was uh when people when i first got there and people were telling stories they all were saying things that were very similar to what abductees said yeah and so i'm compared i'm going oh my gosh and it just had a different name yeah. and as you know the alien world is telepathy well the bigfoot world is mind speak it's got that native american thing going in different, on it so different just different words for the same thing different words for the same thing they all have orbs you know they yeah. or or they're there then they're not you know they can communicate with you well that's aunt betsy's talking to me well that bigfoot's talking to me the aliens are talking to me they're all talking to you you know and you go to certain other areas of the world that I've gotten to interview from coast and, you know, it's always a fairy. It's always a fairy. You know, it's like, oh, that's kind of new still to us or to me at least. But um, here's something you'll find pretty unique. It was the very first thought I ever had in my life ever, ever. And uh, you don't think about it until years later because you grow up thinking everybody is experiencing what you are. You don't know any different. I wasn't live. I didn't grow up in a subdivision where there were other people around. We grew up in an area in Kentucky where it was kind of like everybody had five, six acres, maybe 10 acres. So, you know, you're the kid and, you know, maybe there's not any other kids until you go to school again, you know? So, so I'm out there playing with ants and, you know, feeding them a little sugar and watching them pick it up and take it somewhere. You know, I'm doing these types of things as a kid and walking around in the woods and, um, the very first thought I ever, 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 ever had was, and this is going to be really incredible, um, because I've never heard anybody say this before, but I remember just having this visual going down. I was like in the sky going down. I'm only giving the interpretation that I can now, um, going down from the sky. And there was two, there was something over here on the side of me and something on the other side of me white um um feathery like but not featherly uh wispy i guess and they were talking to me in the mind it wasn't the voice i just remember hearing it was almost even a lot of words but it was also the message was you will always be and they were taking me straight down to where it was the top of a house and i was going inside the house and you could see a family and you could see this little kid from above, from, you know, looking down the top of the little kid's head holding a stuffed animal of some sort. And I went down into it. And the message was, you'll always be. You're going to come out on the other side. You you will keep going. This will pass. You and did, These did things. This, did this happen then, do you think, when you were... I was like three. Oh, 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 yeah, that's right. We're, we're getting I think to I was early three. Days, right? So you can remember that far back. I mean, I can't. Yeah. I can't remember th being three and having them kind of memories. But uh, yeah. do you think that you were taken from your bed or? or... I think. I think this is. I think yeah. I was. A, I was. They. Somebody. It was my soul going down into this kid. Yeah. Well, this I. Body. Al yeah, I almost wanted to say that. Did you think that you'd actually been removed from your body? I don't even think I was removed yet. I think it was just the first time they put me in. I, mm. You know, and I've talked to remote viewers, uh, the Psychic Spy ones, Project Stargate, Lynn Buchanan, I, I learned from him, um, and uh, Lori Williams as well. They, they did the remote viewing uh, that I took classes for. And Lynn, when he was with the uh, Project Stargate, do you know what I'm talking about? The psychic spy? I don't. Spy? Know. I don't know. Oh, no. no. We're going to have to get you hooked up. Well, these were psychic spies back in the uh, Cold War where our army guys, I guess the Russians were already doing it, or we feared they were already doing it, and they were using their mind to find out where soldiers were yeah. and what to do and you know, doing all this psychic spy stuff. So I guess we kicked up our program on it. I don't know. So we can bring them on sometime for you, and yeah. they can tell you more. But – you could give these uh, psychic spies a target. They, they're totally blind to it, and they can tell you all sorts of things. So these guys came in handy where 
they would find out where our we- where weapons were, where hostages were. They had all these different tools, but they were so good because they worked every day, every day, every day. You can imagine how much better you yeah. can get. And these guys were already talented. They would um, give them targets just to learn other things. And he said at one point they gave him the target of death and they would try to do things like, okay, here's a person one minute before they died, 30 seconds before they died. Okay. They died 30 seconds after they died. You know, what are you seeing as a psychic spy through their eyes? Uh, 10 minutes after they died, two weeks after they died, two years, 13 years. Well, he said that it was all sorts of different things. He said, you know how some people think it's hell or, or we're in purgatory or we're in heaven or this or that. He says, we've seen them all. We've seen where people see all those different things. So he had said, so everybody's got a piece of stuff. He said, but what's interesting is sometimes you just see black. And he said, and sometimes we would see black, black, black for two years, three years afterwards, four years afterwards. And then we started seeing at 12 and 13 years old, they started seeing a world through their eyes again. And they believe that that's where like a lot of tribes, right, would say, you know, now you're a man at 12 or 13, you know. Yeah. So they said that's where they kind of thought that might have came from. So when so I kind of think maybe that's when my soul was added to this body. And I remember um, even looking out the window at one point or a door at price still three and looking out, realizing I was in something. <laughs> so it's, isn't that something? Yeah. It is, yeah. It's, and I've not heard anybody describe it like that. It's really interesting. Yeah, that's and, weird. And jump, and jump into this project. Is this what it a military funded project? The psychic spy one, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was uh, they. Uh, it was a top secret uh, one for twenty years that no one ever knew about and was not very successful. But for twenty years, <laughs> they put in millions of dollars. So well, I go you, then you've just beat me to punchline. So for something yeah. that's of no use, yeah, nobody believes in. They'll pour yeah. millions of dollars into it, won't they? Yeah. You know, just yeah. like the subject of UFOs, it's of no consequence, it's of no defense significance, but we'll pour millions of dollars, black budget yeah. kind of programs, into trying to discover what exactly is happening. So yeah. over the years then, Connie, you'll, you'll have spoken to lots and lots of sort of famous people, some not so famous, on Coast to Coast, on your own radio Paul's show. one of those famous people. You what, Sorry. Paul's one of those famous people. <laughs> Thank you. Well, tell, us, tell us about some of the more interesting ones. Um, hmm. And are you all hearing me okay? Because I heard a pop at one point. You got me I okay? Mean, yeah. Les is so cool, isn't he? He's just the man. You, that's so cool. You got this dude helping you. That's so nice. <laughs> that's so nice. Um, some of the more popular ones that I've talked to along the way. Um, Hmm. I don't know. Not, 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 not necessarily popular, interesting. You know, because there have been people that you've spoken to who've not got a name, not got anything, and they'll have come on your show or they'll have yeah. made contact with you and they'll have told you something like mind blowing. Do you know what I mean? It, um, you know, it's, uh, gosh, I've never been asked that before because I, it seems like um, the people that I'm able to bring in either on coast or on my show. I've talked with them in a way that, uh, you know, I believe what they've got going on. Uh, they've told me some interesting things. And uh, so to me, it's all kind of mind blowing. And that's the yeah. people I want to have on. You know, I always want to I like to have people on that have had encounters that go and research and have them. You got to be careful. There's a lot of embellishers out there. I don't want that. You don't have to embellish this stuff. You don't have to do it, you, you know. Um, that's one of the reasons I've kind of stayed away from the television part of this. You know, I pitched some shows along the way because of being my background of it, but they would usually, the networks would usually want to do something to give you a climax at that commercial. And you're like, but it's not real. Yeah, Why do we need to build a climax? It's not real. And nothing's changed, does it? I, no. I, I, I watched, I, I don't know, the new season of one that were on started last night and we got exactly the same thing. Every ad break, we just got a, like a climax of something that was going to happen. And when we come out after ad, it's like an anti-climax. It's just not happened. So, and and I watched it with Bob Brown, and we both felt pretty much the same about it. Hopefully, it might get a little bit better further into into series. Do you think then, over the years, in in time you've been involved in it, that we've 
we're, we're getting a better understanding of the phenomena through the television shows no or just no our just own research broad brush stroke broad spectrum of Okay. Well, if you stay away from the shows and that's one of, you know, I was just talking to somebody yesterday about it. I'm like, you know, look, I don't want to do those types of shows. I don't want, I know it's a mass audience and we can actually educate that mass audience, but they're not educating them correctly. So you immediately know what somebody, when they're out researching on their own, if they actually get to do it after they've watched all these shows, you can tell it's based on these shows they've watched and they expect certain things to happen or they do certain things. And you're like, no, no, they did that just for TV. They did that just for TV. Um, but so but I, I think like people like you and I and and um, like uh, some of the other people, I absolutely. Oh, my gosh. You, uh, I don't know if you know. Um, uh, Mike Patterson up in Canada. Uh, he no. has a Sasquatch uh, relationship with, with Neff is one of his friends. I don't know if he's here now or not. He's a blue rocker, but um, he, he, he's boots on the ground. He's real McCoy as well. He's not going to tell you something that's, he's not going to embellish it. You're going <laughs> to, people are going to think it because he's got amazing stuff, but right. But when you get something amazing, people will come on. No, really, all this stuff really happened. I can't believe it. But, you know, you have to find out who you can trust, who you cannot. But I think the more that people like us can get together and compare, first of all, like you and I have done that, and you and I are, like, you'll say to me, you'll stop me and go, Connie, I know what you're saying is true because you don't know what it is either. I'm like, no, I have no clue, but this happened and it's weird. It's, it's a fact. And, you know, yeah. These people that you're dealing with, most of them are boots on ground, aren't they? And that's their that's stories are amazing. Yeah. Uh, the, the amazing ones are on the TV shows. They've probably never actually spent a night out in for a store. Or, so, or, and, you know, winters up on cliff tops. Uh, so you do get yeah, amazing so, stories. You know, the, 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 yeah. I don't mean we're the real deal, that bit wrong thing to say, but you do get amazing <laughs> stories. You know, I mean, me and myself and Les. Uh, I don't know what day it is, was, uh, the Les will correct me, I think it was Tuesday, but we went to Silpho Moor uh, in, in North Yorkshire. It took us well over an hour, which is nothing in your terms. I know you travel hours and hours and hours, but for me to travel, as, as people have a laugh with me, I'm travelling out of the Shire like I'm a hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> so we, but we're up on Silpho Moor, uh, 12 houses, 12 houses, nothing on top of this moor to, to look at but forests, an open moorland and and some incredible things that have been seen and experienced over the years and we, we were me and Le, we were doing a little bit about what were called the silpho saucer which was an alleged flying saucer that landed in i think it was november 21st 1957 uh tiny thing 18 inches across 35 pounds in weight and a couple ended up talking to us from one at cottages and really hospitable people who were lovely to speak to them and when we told them what we were doing, they were receptive. They, no, no, laughing and tongue in cheek. They, I don't mean they believed every word we were saying, but but they were really receptive. And we found that in a cottage a little bit further down. And we, we'd just gathered a little bit more information. But I, I know we've gone off that point. Like, but you've got to get to these places to get. We didn't get a sensational story, but to get a sensational story without building some kind of weird crack or growl before an advert. And then coming back and it was nothing. It was just dog that had backed. It's so you know? But yeah, so I laugh because it's true. It's so true. And they have to do that. That's what they have to do. That's their job. I get it. I was in that field. I guess I still am, I guess. But I don't do these shows because I know that they got to do that. And I don't want to be a part of it. Documentaries are a whole different thing. And and uh, even then, it's a, sometimes it's a, the interpretation of others. Sometimes it's just head heads talking back and forth. But the documentary styles uh, that I want to do is, hey, go with me. Well, that's why I created my show, A Blue yeah. Rock Talk and Creepy Hotspots. I take you to live investigations. It's basically, hey, look, I want to go on these things, and I need help to eat and pay my bills to do it. So let's do a membership site. You guys go with me. You help me pay for it. Ta-da, I'll go. <laughs> I'll be the one around these 12-foot things, uh, and and uh, you all can watch. And if I anything happens to me, at least it's on camera. You guys can make sure you, you send somebody my way. Uh, because it is creepy. It is scary. It is, you know, I know there's a lot of people that they're not afraid when they do this. I get it. Good for them. 
I'm not at that stage. You're going to know if I go, oh, you're going to, I am not going to lie to you if I'm scared. <laughs> and I am. I hate as, as you know, this is where guys got it made in one area. I mean, you all got it made in several areas. I, I love men. There's, there's nothing wrong with men. I, nothing at all. But in the middle of the night, when you're out at one of these investigations I know you're out gonna, somewhere, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You guys can freaking get a can or stick it out the window and do your thing. We have to actually literally get out of the vehicle and go on the ground. I got to take my little doggy with me, too. And I got to make sure she didn't run off because it's pitch black where we are. If we're in a mountain somewhere, it's pitch black and you got to go. You got to go. And it's awful because it's, I'll go out with a light and I'm like, because uh, 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 I'm afraid. It's <laughs> funny you, you say it, you know, because over the years, Mary's come to some dark, creepy places with me. And <laughs> she, doesn't, she doesn't bother now, but she's not bothered about going. But a, a, a reason for not going is she said, there's no way to go for the toilet. You know, honestly, and she, she just hates it because you've got to go somewhere really dark and it's, it's not nice. It's, not. it's a weird thing to be talking about, guys. On oh, just one true. thing. <laughs> Everybody, any, any questions for Connie? I think Les has already said, but put them in capital letters. Deborah, uh, who was doing our moderating tonight, and Andy, just get them to Les and he'll give us the little sign and we shall fire some questions across at Connie. Uh, who do you so, think Paul, just so you'll know, I mean, I think she's in here. I think I see her little head. I don't have Deborah, my readers I've on. Deborah, yeah. little Deborah I've Jane never. East. Uh, I call her now the Jane of all trades. Uh, mm. instead of the jack of all trades and she um she's the one who introduced us a long time ago yep there's nobody i don't think that i like better on internet than deborah she's Seriously. great absolutely. I guess she, yeah, she's absolutely just brilliant. wonderful she's just wonderful i love her so and, um, and that's a thing we need to say to les because we need deborah on here we need to yeah have a talk yeah. to deborah les. so we'll we'll, we'll try and fix that up I'm going to uh, grab her, so I'm going to grab her, so you can't get her less. Yeah. No, uh-oh. So, <laughs> who do you think's broken any new ground over the last 20 years? UFO, cryptid, if anybody. Well, you know, it just depends on what stories you hear. It's, you know, th I find this interesting. People will go, hey, do you know so-and-so? Nope. Do you know this person? Nope. Do you know this person? Nope. And they'll be like, well, who are you? You're not this. You, you don't know these people? And then I'll go, do you know this person? No. Do you know this person? No. Do you know this person? No. Well, you know, it depends on who you're around, what you're listening to, what you're watching. There's a ton of it out there. And if you're in one section of the world, maybe you're studying the people that you can go out with only. Uh, or maybe somebody that's close by that you have a, uh, a chance to maybe do something with them. Or maybe just someone far away. It depends on who, you know, you have to connect with who works for you. What, to me, I'm actually just, you know, I'm just doing it myself. So, uh and then I'll I'll meet people along the way because maybe I'm going to do something on coast, you know, so it's like I got to get out there and check out other people or I meet them because they're out there with me or I'm with them or I learn it from somebody else. And, you know, you always get word of mouth of somebody saying, oh, my gosh, you have to you have to meet this guy or you got to see what this person is doing or somebody will say, hey, watch something on YouTube. In fact, I just saw something today. Uh, it was a YouTube video that somebody got with a trail cam which is usually very rare to ever get something like that even though you can and i thought man who is this guy and and it looked great it didn't you know there's a lot of fake stuff out there too uh but this guy's stuff looked good and now i'm like okay i gotta go try to find him in the future and see about uh talking with him about it because when you get those things and you're already putting them out there you're willing to talk about them so tell us what you did what did you do different that your trail cam caught it and and somebody else's doesn't um so you know i kind of just things like that will happen paul like just being introduced to you at one point do, do you think then that any one person or or organization is sitting on the truth uh, obviously, I mean, you, we don't. I think both of us sat sat here, and the people in the chat. I think we know that there's a reality to it. Well, we do. We not. Well, we wouldn't be doing this. Oh, there's no you, question. You, it's real. You've pointed out ten minutes since, and then I can say same, and I know Les can. That we we've, we're not in it. If we were in it for money, we'd, we're in the wrong game because we've never <laughs> made a bean from it. Do you know what I mean? I've brought these hey. books. But they don't make any money. I mean. It, uh, 
<laughs> mine's a membership so people will help me pay for it right and i'm like please y'all bring in a friend bring in a friend so we get some more gear we can get this we can get that you know um it's not uh you don't make it for the money you, you know people do think i'm going to go in there i'm going to get the first picture that well hey bob gimlin got a great picture at one point but and and yeah. and gimlin they got a great video i absolutely believe that's true video absolutely but he hasn't made a dime off of that. No. He's he's a little cowboy, and I don't know if you've ever got to talk with him, but he's this little bit cowboy. He's a gentleman as well, but he is just, you know, mean, tough little dude in the long run where it's, you know, he's a fighter and he'll make it happen. But, no, he's a gentleman, a great guy, and quiet. And, no, he hasn't, you know, he can do some speaking events and it might make a little bit, but, oh, no, he, he he's not making money off of this. And, like and obviously, think. you spoke to him, Connie, yeah? I did. I did. I was told uh, they I got him on coast and uh, it was funny because people said uh, he's only going to be on for about 10 minutes. And I was like, wow, why do you say that? And he's like, uh, people would say that's all he ever does. He goes on stage, he talks for about seven, eight minutes and he talks real low like this. And he's a tiny little guy and he talks really like this. So he gets up on stage and I guess he just gets nervous and he's, uh, you know, he talks like this and then thank you very much. He's very grateful for everybody. And then he goes and sits back down. And I, I saw him do that actually before, but I had him on coast and, and I had him almost the entire four hours, except that I knew there was somebody kind of waiting in the wings to come up. So I, I, I just ended it in about, I don't know, three hours and a half or so, uh, just so I can uh, bring the other person up. He just was a little talker. He's a, he's one yeah. of the best people you'll ever meet in your life if you ever get a chance to meet him. So, so, I mean, I'm, I've, and obviously, you know about the footage and you know more about that than me. But as he said, he's had more experiences. So well, that the, the best, the pinnacle. Um, well, I, I, it's kind of the pinnacle when they're, um, when you get a shot like that, right? Oh, but, God, God. Yeah. But I mean, it could, yeah. could have seen better things than that, but just not got it on film. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think he has, I think I, I was focusing more on some other things and, mm. um, but I do believe, yeah, he's had more, um, I, I can't remember. I was just no, no, on so many other things. But, you know, the biggest thing I took from it that I thought was cool is he said, you know, that shot, that famous shot where, you know, how it's standing and everybody, that's kind of the magnet to, that you put on your refrigerators, that one silhouette of Patty. He said, when, when that still shot came out and everybody kind of uh, sends out the neat little silhouettes with that that shape that walk that stance that still shot he said that's when she was looking at me <laughs> so now i always think of that every time i see it I, i'm like wow patty's looking right at bob right there i just think it's really it's cool terrible, really Do you, yeah. uh, to get that shot then and let's let's say that yet yeah, is 100 percent legit because i have no reason to believe otherwise yeah. do, do you do you think it let him because oh, there's been a lot of people tried since you know a lot of people say that, right? Well, they let you, th and and I think people might have relationships where that is, where hey, go ahead and get me now, go ahead and get me now. I think people have that, um, but I think sometimes, I think some people just kind of run up across some of them along the way. Yeah. I think that seems to happen. There was something a long time ago. I don't. I, I just remember seeing it on YouTube at one point. These guys were wherever they were. They were on snow-capped mountains, to where they were at the top of a mountain. And they showed you video all the way around. They were in the middle of nowhere. There, there were these guys that would be dropped off, I think, by helicopter or something, and then they ski or something. I, I don't remember what it was, but they were in the middle of nowhere, and they were videotaping. I seen it going up the mountain. You saw it? the the, yeah. the human. They were like, "That's got to be a bigfoot, you guys." There's nothing else, right? So I yeah. think they just happened to get it, and it never looked up at them, and recognized them. I don't. I don't remember that happening. It just was walking, right? Yeah, you know, the, the, yeah, I, yeah, and probably I think sometimes they just come up it across. Just, it. It's just sheer luck. Yeah, but I, a few. I'm um, going back probably eight or nine years. Now we're in Flixton and Staxton Wold, which is close to where we are, eleven miles away. Didn't see anything. My little dog, and there were three tree knocks. I wouldn't say right next to my shoulder, but again, me. I never saw a thing, and I, 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 just, I just feel sure that. Well, I know it, there were no wind. I know it weren't trees knocking together, and they were proper tree knocks, as though somebody's got a, a lump hammer or a, and just whacking trees. 
and I just sat there. Then with a voice recorder on, which is probably the wrong thing to do, but I did. I did. And I sat there and had a coffee, sat with my little dog, and for the best part of 45 minutes, nothing happened. And then me, myself and Les, you can see how long we've been looking at Wolfland because it's before we decided we were going to do it, and we ended up at Spittle Inn, which is the, built. This It's not built. This is the old farm. Originally, in 937 AD, this was the Spittle built to protect the travellers from the ah. infestation of savage beasts. Later, it became a farm, and then later, it became an inn, the Spittle Inn. And, and now there's like a tourist attraction there, or there was. And me and Les went there. We were just sort of looking around at the things to do with Flixton and the werewolf. And they've got a few things in, in picture the frames, bits werewolf. of information. But my point is, we're in this sort of big building. I don't know if Les can remember. And we, we, we were just talking about the, the Flixton werewolf and had they got any stories of it. And a, a picture just fell off wall. And, and uh, like, <laughs> we, we, let's, let's, I'm sure he remembers. Now he'll know. We, all right, I mean, we, pictures fall off wall, don't they? Do you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Things happen. So, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's uncanny that it were just at the moment we were talking about it, and it literally did, or it fell off wall, off just bounced out of a cabinet and knocked some other things down, and everybody just thought, well, that's a bit strange. But I don't know. I think a lot of it's by chance, but some of it. I mean, if these things have got the intelligence that we're attaching to them. But yeah, not exactly what they're doing. We'll just what we'll do, Connie. We'll just see if Les has got any questions from our listeners. Sure, and sure. Thank, thank you. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's uh, been a great show up to now, uh, Paul and Connie. Thanks. Um, yeah, okay, we've got some good questions in, uh, you guys, and a question from Space Cadet Lottie. And uh, I think you might have touched on this earlier on, Connie. It's for you. Which interview has been the strangest you had on Coast to Coast? The strangest? <laughs> um, yeah. I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, was it Peter Nichols? I think I got his name right. If anybody knows exactly who I'm talking about, please uh, say his name. I think it was Peter Nichols. It was uh, when I was very first on. So just going back to coast to coast, because I think most people know that. And I hope you guys will join me on Blue Rock Talk. I'll talk about that in a minute. But I think it was Peter Nichols was his name. And he was uh, a big part of the uh, Montauk project. So if anybody oh, yeah. remembers, throw that name out. And he, it was, I was very new to coast to coast. You still, you know, don't always know the ins and the outs you know and that is george Norrie's show man he's the guy and he it's his show it's his home i'm in his home as a guest doing the show you know and it's awesome so i've got this guy on that a lot of people wanted to learn more about with the montauk project and it was actually on a valentine's night i i remember that i'm like this is cool. It's all right. If I don't have a date on Valentine's night, I'm on coast. This is awesome, right? And I'm talking to talking to Nichols here. And he was a big part of the Montauk Project. And he was talking about um, being able to influence somebody and the proper time to influence them. Now, I had read up on him because I only knew bits and pieces of them and they were just kind of scattered in my head. So I really did look into him before conversing with him. And I like to do all that fresh on air, right? So it's not some lame thing where we've already talked about it. I, I don't like that. I like to have a conversation. So we're having a conversation and I pretty much knew everything he was gonna say. If I asked something, cause it's pretty intricate that stuff that they were dealing with and pretty off the wall. So I was like, you know, I, I pretty much knew everything he was going to say, but I didn't know what he was going to say when I asked this question. He said, <laughs> I asked him something and he goes, do you really want to hear that? I said, yeah, because in, in an interview, any conversation where you're talking with someone and they, I hate when they go, I'll bring that up later. I kind of did that, though, with my show here just a second ago, didn't I? But they'll say, we'll talk about that later. Then all of a sudden there's like a little script in their head and you're like, no, no, no. Tell it now. <laughs> well, are you sure we can tell it later? Because they think they need to prep people. I'm like, no, we've already come up with the question. Go ahead and give the answer, right? That's what I think. Hey, if it just came up in conversation, don't script it out till later. Bring it on. Then he goes, well, okay. <laughs> and I thought, 
<laughs> what what's going to happen here? Well, the question was about influencing and how do you do it? And you think, you know, you basically you have the secret and I'm sure you can go back and hear this. So I'm just kind of remembering off the top of my head. But I remember <laughs> when he gave the answer. Oh, it, this is his answer as much as I can remember it. So everybody just knows it's his answer. <laughs> so don't hold me on it. But it was about influencing and how they could influence these kids. And he said that the best time to influence is basically at orgasm. All right. Now, I didn't expect this. Again, this, he went right to it, right? But it was, but he, even the way he said it, so you got to go with me, Paul. He goes, well, me and this guy thought we would test it out. So we were in a hotel room and I'm just summarizing because we were in a hotel room. And so we looked at each other because we knew how we needed to do this. And, and we looked at each other and said, well, I'm not a homo and you're not a homo, but, and they started doing their thing and to, 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 I guess, learn it or see if it would happen or something. And I'm just going, oh no, cause I'm new to coast. It's Georgia show. I think they just crossed the line. So, oh yeah. my gosh. But everybody wants the answer, right? All this is going to my head, right? And it's Valentine's night and I'm going, oh, I could have been on a date. What am I doing? What's going on? Oh no, this is going to be my last show. It's going to be my last show. It's going to be on an orgasm type thing. And then he starts talking, and as he's talking about it, he says it in very, very, like, if you were in a hospital and the doctors were talking to you. So he said it in all these really nice, you know, it was, you know, those nice words. It wasn't like slang of, hey, my, you know. It was. So as he was talking, I was like, well, he's saying it very, you know, professionally. <laughs> so I'm trying to bring it back in. I'm just going, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And he's just so, going so on and on. And I just thought, I'm getting tired. Oh, it was embarrassment. terrible. And, and then you've just inflicted it on me. <laughs> yeah, and I did. I put it on your show. And, and uh, so, right, <laughs> I did. I did. I put it on your show. No, well, the next good. Uh, the next day, the vice president of the entire syndicate had a conversation with me, and he and he's kind of laughing, but he's also saying, Connie, <laughs> I know, I know it was the adult hours. Yeah, because I was like, these are all the things that were in my head. I'm like, okay, it's after it's after a certain time, so it's adult hours. Everybody's an adult. <laughs> it was said like a doctor would say it. It was the answer. It was, and he goes, I know you did all these things, but... <laughs> Like, I know, I know, it's not my show. So, yeah, that was the toughest, uh, craziest thing. It, and and the funny thing is, Paul, I, you might agree, the, the, the things that I'm more shocked at even are, are people things. <laughs> you know, we see these crazy, you know, UFO, Bigfoot, whatever. We see these things. And it, we're amazed and we're like, oh, my gosh, and it's mind blowing and it stretches the mind. But then it's with people that you're like, what? <laughs> you're more yep. shocked about. <laughs> well, just throw a curve for you. Didn't, you didn't expect it. But uh, there you go. There Where's, you go. Any more questions? Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's a great account, uh, Connie, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, to say the least. Uh, quite, yeah, thank you. Uh, Steve uh, 71 <laughs> is asking, has Connie? Ever been on a hunt for Bigfoot in America? All the time. Yeah, all the time. So so the show that I do, I'll just go ahead and tell that if that's okay. It's yep. um, So my own personal show and, and why I kind of, you know, decided I'm going online with my shows because I don't have a TV network telling me. We need a climax here. We need to make the door creak over there. We need to make a howl happen over there. No. Hey, I'm going to, you know, when the internet started popping up the way it could, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to do live investigations, take you with me. And it's membership. So it's a whole community. So you pay to get into this. You go with me on live investigations and you're a part of it too. And you're a part of the community. It's a safe place for you to talk about things. And we experience things together. And sometimes it's a haunting, which is overnight. And sometimes it's up somewhere uh, across the, anywhere. I'd love to do it with you at one point, Paul, where 
three to five nights you're somewhere and you broadcast back to us or hopefully I'm there with you, which is even better. Uh, but if not, you know, it works out to where, hey, I'm here and you're there and, and, and we're with you and you walk around and we see what you see. And we were able to, to say, hey, you know, go to the left. We think we just saw something to the left. And it's just a whole community and we do it once a month and it's really fun. Um, and so anyway, we do that and you can join and I hope you guys will. You'll become a Blue Rocker. And I think I got a discount for you guys to check out too that I think Les was going to put down below. I can't see yep. anything, but thank you. So y'all make sure you take advantage of that coupon. Uh, if you'd like to join, I, I hope you will, because it's fun, especially with you guys on the other side of the world. Well, like that. Yeah, but, I can kind of vouch for it because I mean, I've sat in on a couple of them. I've been lucky enough. You've sort of let me in uh, You've been sat there, like like me and Les have done, like other people have done. We've been sat in the middle of these forests, and I've seen you sat there. So sit there. it is the real deal. Connie's not just saying this. She's not sat with a brick yeah. wall at back here, you know? So <laughs> do you any more to add to that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here's one, of the, uh, here's one of the experiences that was really amazing to me. So um, there was a, a couple, they're called Sasquatch Journey, and they took me to some of their areas and they showed me unbelievable structures and, and all sorts of things. And if you go, if you join my site, you can go to some of the archives and you'll see these things, these beautiful structures, amazing, amazing things to look at. I mean, just unreal. But at one point we were in an area and we saw a lot of structures and we felt, um, we felt like something around, you know, you get that feeling and they had seen, uh, a head of one, you know, looking around the rocks. This was in the day. And by the way, if you want to see one in the day, go out in the day. These people that say, oh, they're nocturnal, they're not out. No, they're out in the day. Go out in the day. You want to see one in the day? Go out in the day. Uh, that's my that's my advice to you. Because if you, you know, you want to go at night, you might see eyes, you might hear them. Uh, but, ah, <laughs> still <laughs> pretty creepy. But if you go in the day, you'll see them in the day if you're in the right spots and, and you're talking. So what I did was we had, we were on one side, we were like the mountains like this. So we were on this side of the mountain. Then we went down, had lunch and went back up this, this area. And we, I, I'm telling you, Paul, we were like, it was steep. We might've been 9,500 feet up. This is in the Rockies. And we were grabbing like limbs to pull ourselves up. Okay. That incline. So there were three of us, and um, Tony always had a camera, and he would you know, try to shoot you over. And I would have a camera with me, and at times I would just be, you know, I'm just going to put this away because I'm not enjoying it myself. I want to see things. You know, if I catch something, great, but eh, it just seems like I just want to put the camera away. I'm done. And so there's three of us, and we're pulling ourselves up the incline, you know, and it's like, uh, 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 we're dying. We're getting older and older, I guess. I don't know. But at one point, I stood in an area, and I said, in my mind, I said this, in my mind, I said, hey, we know you're here. We see your structures. They have seen your heads popping out. And... I'm in here in the day. You know, I made it just about me at this point. I turned it around and said, I go at night and maybe I'll see you or not, but it's pretty terrifying for me. I know you're there. Uh, and I said, it's not that, you know, I just explained myself. I said, I know <clears throat> it's terrifying because you're not supposed to exist. You're way bigger than us. You could tear us apart if you wanted. Uh, we don't know really anything about you, but I know you're highly advanced. So can you let me see you in the day where it's less intimidating? Can I see a full body of you? These are the things I said mentally, and I made sure every syllable came out. And I said it. I didn't just blow it off. And then we kept walking and pulling ourselves up, and boom, right straight ahead of me, as if, it knew exactly where I was going to be. It knew exactly where I was going to look. It somehow <clears throat> somehow made sure of that. I don't know how they do it, but they make sure they get how they need it to be seen or heard or whatever, I guess, when they're in that mode, I guess. And as I looked over, I saw a man, looked like a man, a big man to me. Because we're in the middle of the Rockies. I'm not expecting 
I don't know, you know, you're looking, but you're still not expecting to see one you're hoping to. And it kind of came parallel as if it ran from one area and, and stopped itself at a tree. You know, when you run and you like kind of grab something, you stop yourself and you kind of do that number. And it did that. It like ran up and stopped at a tree and did that. And then it turned and it went up parallel where I was. It went up the mountain. It was as though, okay, here you go, here I am. And it did this little pivot and it looked up the mountain and it started scaling the mountainside, that incline that we were holding onto things, full body. And I'm looking and I'm going, and I said, hey y'all, there's some guy over there. Look, there's a guy, we're not the only ones out here. And they were like, what, what, where? Cause we were a little spread out. And I was sometimes, you know, just trying to really get them to look. And for some reason, Tony never turned the camera, which is weird. We always thought, he always turns the camera. Why is he not turning the camera over? I'm like, no, turn your camera over there. And I'm just thinking it's a regular man, right? And I'm watching him and I stop and I, I remember thinking, well, is that a man or is that what we're here for? And I started watching it and it had this belly. It was total black, but at one point it was almost like the sun hit it and it was that blue that kind of happens when it's black. You know, that bluish kind of yeah, when it's so black, thing it's that happens. Blue, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it starts going up the incline. And this is what it did, full body. It was going up, it was going up. If you would have put 18 billion books on its head, it would not have fallen. It never moved, it glided, yet I saw the legs moving. And then you saw each arm, like we were pulling ourselves up on any branch we could get. It was putting its hands on trees, a lot higher up tree. We were grabbing little branches to try to pull us up. This thing was pulling itself up on a tree like this, the next tree, just with precision, and the next tree, full hands up higher, so that's where you could get the height as well. Because we were pulling at the bottom. This thing was pulling up high. Yeah. And the more it pulled up, the faster it got. And the legs and the hands. I tell you, I'm not kidding. The arms moved so fast. They had that <laughs> look that you see like in comic strips or, you know, these movies where they're, you know, $6 million bad or whatever. Trying to, uh, you couldn't see. They were moving so fast. But the glide, that's anymore. Thing, isn't it? and it was gliding. It was yeah, gliding, that, but, you know, but the legs and everything was moving, but the head yeah. was gliding. That's that's so crazy. You know, I, I think Les will probably echoes what I'm going to say, and and I'll jump to Gamekeeper in one of the forests, and he said he saw it come out of the forest, and it was just smooth. His analogy, just like a torch beam that had just passed down wall. Yeah. Said, just, there were no sort of. There's 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 divots, there's ruts in ground. There were no up and down. It it was just it was just smooth, and we hear this. You'll have heard this anyway. I mean I mean I'm not I'm not educating anybody here because you'll have heard this this sort of smooth movement. And what what do you think that is? What what makes them do that? What makes them so different? I got to tell you, you know, the thing about that is, if you like, uh, have you ever heard of the Flatwoods Monster? Yeah, I have heard of it. I don't know much about it. Okay, well, they would say, and it was more of like reptilians, I think, is what people had said. The Flatwoods monster <laughs> was more reptilian, or at least some of the pictures I've seen. And they always had, were like they were on something. And maybe they were, but they were gliding. Maybe they were on something. Or maybe, this, you know how some stories change. And so I might be wrong here, but the stories change along the way and through the years. And they were saying these things glided. Uh, and some people, the pictures, they, they're on like some contraption that hovered and they would glide. Okay, that would make sense. But did did they actually see that or was it gliding and they didn't see it, but they just thought that because we're used to seeing things glide. But I don't, I don't know, maybe those things as well. And maybe it was a Bigfoot and they thought it was a reptilian. Who knows? You know, again, they change. But when you hear a lot of people say they glide, well, guess what? I saw the full body. It was gliding, but the legs and the arms were moving, and it was going upscale and fast and faster and faster. I don't know how. Do you think I that don't was know. For you? Do you think that was just for you? Did it? Did you yes, think I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. I couldn't believe it. And I knew he did it for me. I was like, he did that for me. Les, are we more questions? Yeah, I'll. Uh, I'll uh, thanks for that, Connie. Uh, I'll ask a question from. Mick Pack, what? Yeah, welcome to the 
to uh, tonight's stream, Mick. What does Connie think of the phenomenon happening in Bempton right now? What's happening? Our area. Well, in, you know, in, we yeah. About, about all the werewolf stuff. Yeah, and the werewolf, the cryptid, the all of it. Cryptid, lights. The UFOs. Yeah, the UFOs. Do you see the similarities to areas where people have spoken to you on Coast, on Blue Rock Talk? Are they, are they talking about the multi phenomena areas as well? Well, that's where I think you and I are very similar because we talk about those things a lot. You and I, like a lot of people, again, they talk about ghost only. They talk about this only, that only. Uh, when people start getting a little further and stretching themselves out, um, I, you know, some, some people just do to like maybe a second character you know they don't always add some of the other ones but more and more people are and i appreciate that because that's what i do i'm not 101 and i'm not just one of them it's let's go deep deep de down into it let's find out their similarities why what how uh and to me it's all about differentiation some people say no it's all one thing it can't be because yeah the areas i've been in too there's lights and then there's many different strange lights, whether there's orbs or beams or sparkles or, you know, there's a light and then it's gone. It poofs a different way or it shines a different way, it glows a different way. Right. And then you got the different creatures, whether it's Dogman or Bigfoot or maybe even something else, you know, alien or not. And different footprints and what the freak is all this stuff? And what is it we don't even see? What yep. is it we don't even know is there? Well, so, I, I think those are my favorite areas, by the way. Those are my in favorite. a way, it's answered part of Mick's question. I mean, but what, what, I don't even, I'm not even sure I know answer to, well, I don't know answer, but I'm, so I don't even know if I could attempt to sure. answer it. Myself, but what do you think special then about these areas? Other than, do you think it's something to do with geology? Do you think it's something to do with ritualistic practice by ancient peoples, Indian, Indian burial grounds? Burial mounds here in the UK, places of where people have poured a lot of energy, which which has somehow evoked these things, or is it just a thin area where these things manifest? You know, I don't know. That would be the you know if we knew that we would find other areas, right, and go right mm -hmm. to them. You know, it's like when people talk about Skinwalker Ranch, they're like, that's you know, there's a whole lot of other areas just like i'm not trying to demean skinwalker ranch mm. at all but there's a lot of areas just like that they just don't have a name yet or people that have yep. found them and are a part of it they don't want to tell anybody because they want to communicate and figure it out themselves or you know have that relationship um i don't know what it is there just seems to be some pockets of areas i don't know i you know you know if you give uh, an answer sometimes on any show anywhere or just in at the old bonfire somebody can hold on to that being your okay, you're, yeah you're stamped with it aren't you yeah, yeah. and yeah. you're like you know that's it today this second and it's a maybe <laughs> it's just a theory you're, right you're, you're spot on you know I'll, I'll talk about aircraft crashes i'll talk about ufo events 1963 july whatever 1963 i might get date wrong because he's, yeah. he's coming out of my head. Paul's an but, idiot. He got the date wrong. But yeah, but somebody will email me and say, you're lying because you said July and it was June when I you said know. it last time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I totally do. It's kind of holding on to all that information in your head, isn't it? It's, it's difficult at times, but uh, it is. there you go. Les, and you're trying to figure thought? it out. You know, you're trying to figure it out. Like, like, let me give you one thought that might, you know, this is something that's been in my head that I think, uh, sometimes, and I don't know, but I'm like, okay, I, I think we're the surface people. There's times I think we are totally the ones on the surface and every, all these other creatures live underground and they pop up and check us out when we're there going, Hey, there's people, you know, it's Saturday night. Let's go see what these people are doing, you know, or let's make sure they don't find, uh, where we go, you know, where our tunnel is down here. Maybe they're the adventurers like we are. You know, and they're like, they're like us. They want to know about us. We want to know about them. But I do feel whatever it is, I can't say that that's the case or not. We have a big amount of space that we walk upon underneath us. <laughs> you yeah. know, maybe there's some other worlds down there because we know there's a lot of bugs that live that way. And guess what? Little ants, man, they have those eyes that the alien, a lot of the aliens have mm -hmm. because they can see in the dark. Right. It's all about seeing in the dark. Um, uh but I, I can tell you this, um, 
I don't know. I mean, I, I just don't. I just know they're real. I've seen them, and it's the like, is, yeah, where are you coming from? Well, they're all, we're all looking to space, and we're all looking yeah. to stars for answers. And it's, it's clearly, right here. Well, yeah, it's clearly it's really here. here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's clearly here. Right, and right. I think they know, but I think they know who we are, don't you? Oh. Yeah, I, I think do. they yeah. totally know who we are and what yeah. we're all about. Well, well, we're not about much good, really, for both of us, are we? You know, <laughs> well, it's true, isn't it? You know, I mean, whatever we find, if first thing we think about if we find a new resource is how much we can, we can exploit it, how much food we can get uh, from it. Do you know what I mean? We, we're not yeah. really brilliant as a species, are we? And, I, and no. I don't say I'm any better because, you know, I think we've all got us faults, but uh, there you go. Les, more questions? Yes, some great answers there, guys. A uh, question from Bridget Van Bosch. Hi Bridget. Hi Bridget. Any tips for learning or improving remote viewing? Any tips to um, improve uh, remote viewing? Yes. Is she a remote viewer? I don't know, Connie. Because okay, so there's some people that will say they're remote viewers, uh, and I'm not saying she's saying that. Um, but there's some people that are psychic and they'll say they're remote viewers because that's like this big hip word that people will go, I'm a remote viewer. But when I, when I actually talk about it, I'm talking about what the military had used and their exact training. And they had a protocol and it would be on paper and pencil. You know, you would do it on paper. The father of it was, um, um, ah, I was saying, I was thinking as I was about to say his name, I was like, I'm going to screw it up. I'm going to screw it up. But I screwed it up. Um, I can't think of his name right now. Um, well, it'll come to you. When sure. it comes, when it comes, I'll say it. Um, but it's it's written down. Uh, they do it all pen, paper and pencils, all written down certain ways. And, you know, they got a protocol. And that way they can get clear to it. There's no theory to it. You know, they do their best to summarize to where here's the facts of it. I'm not connecting the dots. Here's just the facts. And, um, and then you go from there with it. And the, the answer I would give to her about tips of being better at it is exactly what the, the people that teach it. And they're all ex-psychic -psych, psych, spies. That's who you want to go to, like Lynn Buchanan, Joe McMonagle, Paul Smith. Uh, Lori Williams wasn't actually one, but she was taught under Lynn totally. Um, and there's a, several other ones out there, too, that will teach it. And they will say this in fact lynn because he was my teacher he would say practice 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 that's all he ever said and we'd all be like okay and we'd say it with him you know because he that's all he'd say you want to get better at it you keep doing it because it's basically a uh, martial art of the mind and with true remote viewing basically what's happening is your conscious and your subconscious are not talking conscious subconscious they've got their heads looking the other way you've got your um subconscious that knows all the answers all the answers are within all the answers the google here the universe here everything is here uh but your ego basically it gets in your way hey i know the answer i'm smarter than you i'm smarter than you so basically they train you how to talk to have them talk to each other and then you get the right answers and you can go in, in back in time, forward in time, sideways in time. I mean, it's amazing what these guys know. I think they're some of the smartest people in the world that can do this, at, especially at their level, uh, because they can get any answer that they want. And we can all do it, too. And you can do it really quickly, but it takes time to get better and better and better and quicker and quicker you can smell things you can lick things you can buy locate to these areas so it's really really amazing stuff interesting yeah. it is, it's really interesting it is you guys you wouldn't believe it you wouldn't believe it Les? this is crazy okay thanks for that connie uh, i've got a question from lisa odd uh, welcome to the show lisa uh connie what's your thoughts on william cooper's Hour of our time. Uh, did he give a talk, uh, a speech, Hour of our time? I, no, I haven't. You not, you're not aware? No, no. Okay. Sorry, Sorry. Lisa. We'll have to Sorry. pass on. Yeah, no, we'll I have got, to. I got to write that down now. Oh, I got to watch it now. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks. William Cooper. Yeah. I think Do we're going. about this, Liz? Do you uh, know? No, no. I'm All, right. Sorry. All right, yeah. good. Three for three. Uh, uh, no we're clueless, Lisa. <laughs> we're idiots. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I I know of the speech, but I, I can't go into. I don't know the detail. Right. Yeah. Bummer. Okay. 
All right then. Um, question from Bridget Van Bosch. Uh, the question is: Has Connie had any personal experiences of high strangeness? I know you mentioned the Bigfoot on the mountain. Uh, possibly that was uh, one high strangeness. Have you have you any more? A whole lot, a whole lot. Because they started, you know, right at three with these feathery things next to me, really light, crazy. Wow. Um, and full of wisdom. What kid would think that, you know, you will always be, right? How wise is that? But, uh, yeah, you know, grew up in a haunted house. Mm. And that really, you know, sparks it. In fact, a lot of people I know, uh, it started with them in a haunted house. And with that, I don't know if it's just part of the type of people. Some of us are that we have these things happen a lot. Or if that's just where it happened to start and then it continues on because we're open to it or we've become open. I got to tell you, the re I'm pretty good with what's called ambiance where you can kind of know what's going on in the room and empathic. And I know a lot of people here the same way. Uh, we all experience that. But mine grew, and that's where like Lynn Buchanan would always say, practice, practice, practice your ambiance. Be in one room and feel how cold it is, the amount of light that's in it, what the vibe is, you know, then, then go into the hallway and notice a change and then go into the, the, the kitchen and notice that change, you know, and you start noticing those things and you start practicing with the vibe and the feel, uh, then you can be good enough to be in a room and somebody could walk in, you know, 20 feet away from you and you would know. And not only would you know, but you know, if they were female, you know, you would know if they have long hair, you would know a whole bunch about them without even turning around. So as a kid in this haunted house, I just knew when there was something around and because I was a little kid scared out of my mind, I would try to know where that thing was because I wanted to run to the other side of the house, right? I want to be as far away as I could. <laughs> so I would be like, okay, I'm downstairs. Uh, I got to get the laundry uh, there. I know it's there. And I'd run up the stairs, you know, and, and, and anywhere, uh, the, you know, I would always feel these, this thing over my bed at night. And I just, you know, for some reason you can put that cover over you and you are safe. I don't know why, <laughs> but you'd feel that. Right. And I think that really leads you on to being open to the other things that are going on when, when you start noticing things in the sky or other weird things and you're open to it because mm. golly, you already know something invisible was over your bed almost every night <laughs> and walked around the house. Yeah, good answer. And uh, we'll see whether Les has got any more. Because I, I like these questions, Connie. I don't know. I think it's good because the, the, yeah. the cuff in it, you know, it's good. Yeah. So yeah. I can give you the high strangeness one where there's a beam of light. There was a, I, I actually, uh, I'll give you the short version of it, was in an area where all these things were happening, unbelievable things were happening. And, and someone had told me how, um, uh, the uh it was one of dennis Foles locations up in the rockies and jason frank had been out there too and he had taken me that's these these people's names uh blue rockers um and one of the things that he had told me was that there was this orb that would fly around now we were there to see bigfoot and all that kind of things the first time i ever went up there first time ever there was a blizzard all this crazy stuff and it was beautiful too i thought how could there be anything creepy here and uh, there, I was up underneath the dad. I was, I was staying. I slept not in a tent. I slept in the cab of their truck, and I was there with my little doggy. And I had woken up. It was a crazy night. The whole thing is it's a whole. It's a whole show or more. But I was, my arms and hands were like this, and I was up under the dashboard. At at the time, I woke up for this experience. And I saw through the window, like this bright light. And I thought, I'm going to see that orb. If I can get myself up from under the dashboard. I didn't question, why am I up under the dashboard? I didn't question, why am I like this and kind of stuck? I didn't question any of that. And then it was like really cold. And I'm talking like 19, 18, 12, 11 degrees. I'm freezing, yeah, well, but I'm not cold. But it's ice and snow outside. And I remember going... 
there's that light. I bet that's that orb. I'm going to see this VW size orb that they were talking about. And as I scooted myself up, because I couldn't use my arms or legs, I could move my eyes and I could use my pelvic. I could do that. And I raised up and I looked through the window of the vehicle. And if you want to see something at night, don't be in a tent. Sleep in a vehicle, okay? And see if something's not facing you, because that happened too that same night. Same night, all this stuff happened. But I looked up and there was something I never thought I'd ever see you guys. It was a beam of light. It was a beam of light. And it was on, there were four, three other tents. And then I was in the truck. And it's a whole story. And I'll tell you guys sometime because it's it's an unbelievable night, less than eight hours. I saw everything just like what you talk about. Uh, but I saw beams of light about 20, 30. I don't know. I think it was really, let's just say 20 yards in front of me and up a tree. And whatever it was that was shining the beam of light down was dark in the trees. It was at night. So it was in the boughs of the, of the trees. So I didn't see what that looked like. It wasn't glowing. It was the beam of light that went so, down on each tent. Right. And it so, looked like daylight. Yeah. So, so I'm hearing this story and I'm thinking that this thing's going to be up in the sky, up in the heavens, firing a beam of light down, but it's not, it's in a tree. It's, it's, it's like the top of the treetops. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and so it's the, right there. Is there, is there any movement in trees then? Uh, it was dark. Oh, yeah. It yeah. was dark. It was dark. It was in the middle of the night, pitch yeah. black, right? I actually thought at one point of it that it was the moon. Uh, apparently, the all the scattered time at this point, yeah. right? And there was a time that I was, for some reason, up on my knees in the cab of the truck and, and bending mm -hmm. down in the back, thinking I'm trying to find something for my dog. Maybe that's where they threw me back down or something. I don't know. But the, the, the light was on in the cab, and I'm going, oh, wow. I'm, I, you know, uh, Denver itself is a mile high, closer to the sun. And so here I am in the Rockies even higher. Wow. You know, and I'm all new to this, these areas and I'm going, well, I guess, you know, the moon really is bright out here. I can see everything in the cab. This so, is what you're doing in your mind, right? <laughs> what about the guys in the tents? Did they experience anything? This light was on me. That's what happened. It turned off. Boom. Yeah. Well, it turned off like someone took a, you know, the, a string and chink you know, to the light up on the top of the pantry. Right. And, um, it, and it would turn off and on, on each one of them. And, uh, it wasn't until get this to answer your question, what you just said, what you just asked was it was the next day, just hours later, uh, we were all deciding we were leaving. We were going to stay another night and we just heard screams of two Bigfoot right the same area, same area. And I got a picture of it with my camera. I went around in a circle and you can see one sitting there, right where all this action happened, right there um, in, in my show, you can see it, but there's no interaction. There's no like, oh, you guys. In fact, one of the guys mentioned, hey, so-and-so saw a bit of the light, a light at the top of the uh, tent last night. And I went, Oh yeah, I know what that was. I that that word triggered me to remember yeah. what phenomenal stuff I saw. If it wasn't for that, I would have maybe never remembered it. Yeah. And then I just described it I, and and you I think I even have that on video as well going, "Oh yeah, I saw a light. It was on you and on you and you and it was really unreal and and I also saw a shadow of this. I acted as though Nothing, nothing. There's, there's another strange thing about it because you would think, and I'm not saying I would have done it, that's the strange thing. You yep. so many times you hear people, well, I never even thought to take a picture of it. I, I know Chris has been in chat, Chris Turner, and we were all at Bempton. We'll get back to your story in a moment. We were all at Bempton and the lights were presenting. We didn't, I got a little bit of footage of them. Chris had got a great camera. Jerry had got an excellent phone that could have took pictures of these things, but we got nothing, practically nothing. For, yeah. for the amount of time we watched this light form phenomena. And you would have thought that you sat in that truck would have, I don't know, shouted to people in the tents, something's happening. Or, I was or, lucky or, to move. I yeah, was lucky yeah. to move. They yeah, stop oh, you. You're sorry. I, I believe they absolutely stop you. They yeah, absolutely yeah, freeze you. Absolutely you know. just rabbits in headlights, aren't we? Yeah. You know? 
Yep, exactly. And you know what, too? I don't know if you've noticed this. This is what I've noticed, too. The temperature is not hot or cold. You don't have fear. You don't have anything. Nothing. Your mind does still work and your eyes still move. And obviously, I was able to raise my body up. Yeah. So, so, so consciously think and imprint. I think. Did you did you descend into this lower silence then? This strange atmospheric feeling, or did you not notice the 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 sort of mo the mood change, the silence? Uh, did I notice it while it was happening or later? Well, when... yeah, well, one example. I'll not go into all story because this is we want to hear you, but. For Wolflands, we've got a guy. Uh, a, don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm going to hear you a lot on my we're, show. It's, we're up good. on cliff tops at a place called Scalby Mills in Scarborough. Okay. This guy's gone for a, a walk during the night. He's gone to look at stars. That's where he told me and Leslie takes a bit of food with him, a flask. And uh, he's, he's looking, and then suddenly he realises, and he's, he's he come out with a great analogy, did Gaz, and I hope he listens to this because we want to do a little bit more to work with you, Gaz, please. Uh, but he said it, it was almost as though somebody had just pressed pause button. His exact words. He said, yes. I can't hear seagulls because regardless, in the night around here, seagulls, they've got better eyes than owls. They're flying all over the place. So the seagulls, you can't hear them anymore. You can't hear the waves, can't hear nothing. And everything's just gone unbelievably silent and he feels fearful. And then he could hear feet running towards him like at racehorse. Like I'm at surprised the he felt fear. I'm surprised yeah. about that. Terror, he said. And he's not, he doesn't look like kind of guy to, to feel terror. Like the, like the way you were describing, he said, and if somebody had said to me, a hippopotamus or a rhinoceros were going to run over me, is that's how heavy these feet were coming towards me. Oh, so right. I went into the fetal position, and then just as I thought it was going to hit, everything went back to normal. That's what I'm mm -hmm. on about, this, this sort of descent gotcha. into the lower silence. Did, yeah. did the atmosphere change? Yeah, everything changed. Again, the temperature, everything was changed. And because of doing this or experiencing these things as a kid, um, I think that's where the practice of not only recognizing when maybe something's around that you can detect, uh, who knows what you can't, but I think in learning and some of the things I've read along the way, I have imprinted in my head and in my subconscious okay when these things happen remember 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 right mm -hmm. so if you're doing that all the time i think you will remember some things but some things have to have a trigger yeah. and and when they said light that's when i went oh yeah but i had no enthusiasm it was kind of like oh yeah i saw this like eh, you know yeah just the other day i ate some m ms or something you know it was it was so common fact now if he didn't say that i wonder what I have remembered. remembered it, but mm -hmm. I can tell you this in remembering it. Yeah, exactly. What I've remembered that, but I do notice this. And, and even if I don't remember something, I will try to recognize this, whatever that feeling is that they do, whatever they do to you, that makes you forget, not feel you're in this other atmosphere. Totally. If you want to even call it that, who knows what it is, but it tends to stay with you for a couple weeks. Not as strong, maybe, but I know that the first couple of weeks I can sleep. The next couple of weeks, my body and my soul is terrified. It needs the light on. Mm. And anything that, if, from and my I'm 32 years old, you guys. <laughs> Why are you laughing at that? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but but, but any, anything that. But you know what of... I mean? Yeah, and anything that happens that's quite traumatic or quite eventful of this nature, if I think if you don't remember it very soon after, if you don't have them triggers, chances are you're never going to remember it. You know, when no. I wrote Night People, all about these experiences I had from childhood to present day, I thought it was going to be a trigger for lots and lots of things. To I thought, well, I'm thinking deep now. I'm going back to these stories. I'm really digging through them. And I only remembered two things. There were only two little bits of information came back to me. Uh, that, that, and they were of no consequence. Uh, church, there an event at Church Street that we'll probably talk about later uh, on your show tonight. And uh, Church and, Street. And, Hold and, on. And I, and it, it was something that happened near a disused blacksmith shop. And I remembered the, the story. I remembered what happened. But, I, but writing Night People and, and going deeper into it in my own head, getting it down, I remembered there were a kick in leaves. Masses of sycamore leaves. Never remembered that. So it was no great revelation, but it was autumn. 
Uh, that, do, do, do you know what I mean? That's the only thing. Yeah. Only thing I yeah. could remember. But uh, just a I, just quirky little thing. But back to you, Connie. Les, yeah. No, you? no. And and you know what though? There was a time that I. It was interesting. I, I love to read. But I, I was reading at six years old, uh, like novels, anything I could grab. You know, I was that kid. Uh, you know, you, you live where there's not a, other kids around. Maybe that's what you do. Or I don't know. Maybe I was meant to just read a, a bunch of things. But I remember reading something. One of the books in particular was along the way. It was called, um, it, it was talking about your very first thought. And it talked about, hey, your very first thought is the right one whatever you ask yourself or whatever comes to mind the first thought is the original thought hold on to that as best you can because the other thoughts are what your mom taught you your dad taught you your uncle taught you your brother taught you and then it's their education coming on to you from their experiences maybe uh, uh your uncle ed told you some things because and 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 he told you with a spin and you never knew why you were just a little kid hearing things right you're soaking in everything so these but are influences, got, aren't they? Yeah, yeah you got ed's perspective who was maybe an alcoholic and uh whatever and and you know who knows what you might have learned from him that you know it's going to hurt you later in life because it was his fears on you so this book was all about original thought your first thought is 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 the right thought it's always 100 percent true hold on to that and and it taught you how to imprint it hold on to it imprint it don't let all these other influences come in so i think that's what's helped because i've also i also consciously know this is how it happens you you will forget it do your best to move your eyes around tell your subconscious to make your body do these things move the eyes around look remember hold on to move look uh, i you know if when i was in that spot like this and i saw those lights and again i can't tell you chronologically time-wise what happened i think they take a whisk and just beat your brain up or your memories up like scrambled eggs but there was a time i was like this and i looked over i'm in the passenger seat of a truck cab right I look like this, and just at that window, this huge head, so that's huge the head. Same night. This is the same, the same night. Same night. I saw everything like what you talk about in less than eight hours. Every, everything I could have ever imagined, everything. I never thought I'd see beams of light, and I saw them on each one of them, turning off and on. And they, you know, if if you're in a helicopter and the spotlight is like this, right, and it, it'll go like this, move around. This didn't. It went on off and then it went to the next tent on off it didn't go and adjust itself it knew exactly where it needed to be exactly where it needed to be and it was the most beautiful light i've ever seen and you could see through it yet you couldn't see through it it's really weird i was trying to think is there a stairway in there is that them going in and out is that them pulling us in and out you know i was trying so hard because because of the experience of hold on to it, look, think, you know? Mm. So I think if you do all that ahead of time enough, maybe it happens for you. It's I, interesting what you say about the pure thought, isn't it? You know, the, 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 I've not really thought about the very first thought, but I've, I've said to people in the past, have you ever had a, a, an absolutely pure, unadulterated thought? Original thought, thought yeah. An absolutely yeah. pure thought. We, we, we yeah. lost a friend, myself and Mary, oh, probably 10 or 12 years ago. And I remember laid in bed and I, there, there were no... Oh, oh, I really, I, I really like. I'm not saying name. I really like this person, but there were, or, this person was great. Uh, but there were no buts. I said it, and it was straight from art. And I thought, it what a lovely person. And do you know what? And I, I think I've spoke about it before, but and on art, I saw a face instantly, without me thinking about. Imagine, you know how you see people in your mind's eye when you think. I close my eyes, I think of Leslie's face, Connie's face. A face come to me instantly. And I could see, it. And, her, uh, and her hair were plattered like, uh, only thing I can describe it is like, well, if you went to an Harvest Festival and you see the bread plattered. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it a, yeah. It a crazy thing. It was like looking at an angel. And I just saw a face beaming back oh. at me. And, and so it's just a strange thing. And that's what I, I, I the thought just came from me with en, without any buts or, oh, I can remember and I didn't like that happening. And oh, I can remember this and she said this. It was just pure, just a beautiful person. And, wow. and and that, that image came to me. Strange thing. I mean, there might not be no paranormal attachment to it, 
but I just found it odd because I don't get images like that in my head all the time, you know, so I yeah. found it unusual. So and you held on to it and recognized it. That's oh, a good gosh, thing too. Yeah, you yeah. got to recognize it. People will just blow it off. You yeah. got to recognize it. And so you recognize it. So just doing oh, that did, and yeah, being yeah. conscious. Yeah. I think those are good exercises to have yeah. along the way is remember that original thought, that first thought, don't muck it up with whatever else has been, you know, influenced on it after that and hold on to these things. And so when you do go out to these experiences, I mean, do you remember, you, you know, are you able to do that too? Or, or, well, I mean, the experiences for myself, there's nothing happened for quite a while. There's, there's more stuff happening for Bob, Bob Brown, who lives two floors up from me in, in, in one of our flats. And there's some strange things happening. If, I mean, Bob will not mind me telling you, uh, and he might be listening now, but I spoke to him yesterday. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Yeah. And I spoke to him yesterday and he doesn't just ring me up and say something weird's happened. I, w I went up to watch that TV program that we were on about the new the new series because uh, Mary's not really bothered about that kind of stuff. So anyway, so I went up and he goes, you'll never believe it. And where he sits and he's sat in this leather chair. There's a story to chair, actually, but it's, it's funny, but it's in a macabre way, so I'm not going to tell it. So anyway, <laughs> sat in this chair and there's a mirror on the wall. So, so whatever he's looking at, he's watching the TV, and he said an alien's head appeared in the mirror. Ah! So that's the ending. <laughs> Chairs on the wall. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it, and like, he's lived there <laughs> four years, and last, I, I would have thought, last, I don't know, six or eight months, things have been happening. More so for Bob in that, in that spot up there. Which is odd, but he said he said I couldn't believe it. He said it just popped up. He said no, oh. looking at it, he said and then it disappeared. He said, but I said, well, it's on wall. I said, so it's got to have been behind you to be looking at you. Strange. It weren't in front of the mirror. It was in the mirror. Ah, oh. ah, oh, that's there's like the making the movie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. He might, he might back that one up. We'll have to get Bob on one week. Kurt I love that. I got to. Uh, yeah, Bob does Beacon of Light radio, um, but I think he's might have spoken to Deborah actually. But Les, fire us any more questions, mate. Have we got any? Wow, uh, that was a great conversation there about original thoughts and uh, and the first thing that comes into your mind being pure and original. That's interesting in itself. It is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. it really is. I mean, have you ever? I don't like that, Les. Let's ask Les. No, I've had uh, dirty thoughts, but there we go. I was gonna, I was gonna go that route with you, and I thought, no, nah. and then you did it. Hey, let's let me, <laughs> let me. Oh shoot, I forgot what I was gonna ask you because that that was a good one. That was good. Yeah, uh, no, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll move on, Connie. I've got really another. Oh, oh Les, I was gonna ask you. Does Paul is Paul always this quick and fast? Because I've always. Paul and I, it always seems Paul and I only have so much time to sell, so much that we want to say. So is he ever relaxed? Is he ever calmed down? No. Oh, okay, no. thanks. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I might be able to get a couple more questions in. Uh, a question from Don Lodge. Uh, welcome to the show, Don. Right, Don. Uh, yeah. oh, hold on, Les. For, for people that don't know, Don is uh, the guy responsible for the Truth Proof website. So without Don... I am nothing. You are <laughs> nothing. And less. You without, are nothing. Less, I am nothing. So, or yeah. Mary. You oh, are nothing. Mary, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Les. I've, I've cut, cut Les across this. So. Okay. So this is um, this is really, really diverse from what we've been talking about. But the question is simple. What is really going on at Skinwalker Ranch? We hear conflicting reports. So uh, do you know any updates to that, Connie? Do you know where we are with Skinwalker? You know, when the when the TV show came out, I mean, I, I don't have the I don't have the network it's on. Um, so I don't watch it. And and because of a lot of the TV shows and again, that's my background. So mm. I just kind of got tired of watching those because I didn't want the climax is that I didn't want to see those things. And, you know, I, I don't go in and watch a ton of people's YouTubes or, or shows either because I'm doing my own, you mm. know, and a lot of that is. I just don't want to be influenced by others. I want to see really cool stuff when people got really cool things, but um, you know, I, even any other TV shows for the most part, I watch them and, and I know that there's a, a 
production assistant over there and I know there's a director standing over there and there's craft service table with a bunch of Fritos and donuts over there. So I kind of even think of it in a kind of behind the scenes kind of way. But when it comes to Skinwalker Ranch, um, you know, uh, on coast to coast, George Knapp is kind of like one of the top guys on that thing, bringing the book to you and, and, and uh, um, uh, Comb Keller as well. They put that, you know, did a lot of study in there and, and um, John Alexander. And uh, so these are people I've never really talked to George Knapp much about that. Uh, but, you know, I know he's, he's like one of the top guys with it. I've talked to Comb Keller about it, who was the number two guy to Bigelow who Robert Bigelow was the billionaire that, you know, bought the land. Was this at the one scientist? Point. Comb, uh, uh, Comb Keller was yeah, his number two guy. And yeah, he was physicist and, and, yeah. and everything. Yeah. And I talked to Comb about it a long time ago before I was even ever on coast. And, and I had asked him about it. So this is the one inside thing I have on it. Besides Alexander, John Alexander, he, he had told me some things too. And he, he John had said, Colonel, or, or I think he was Colonel John Alexander, right? He, um, he had said that they did a lot of different experience, uh, experiments. And I was, I was surprised at some of the things they did. I, I am about the experience, the feel, experiencing the encounter of it. But they were getting more into, okay, we're going to set this up and this up and, you know, E equals MC square kind of thing. Well, good. We need minds like that because I'm, yeah. I'm not that mind. You know, I'm more of the feeling and what was it like and what does it mean deeper and all that kind of thing. And and maybe you are the same, you guys. I, but, I think I am. And just to cut yeah. just one second, I think probably both. Both camps are needed, though. I, th I think what they're yeah. doing is needed, you know? Yeah. However, this is what uh, Colm had said about that. Because when I spoke to him about it, I said, what, what, do you, what do you think? You know, And I think at this point they may have sold the property. Um, but I remember him saying, you know, uh, he said, activity comes and goes there. Mm -hmm. And he said, and I believe that these things just come and go anywhere they want. They just move around. They don't stay in the same place or they can and they can come back. He's like, but I think they do move around. And at times you'll have more activity than times that you don't. And he said, here's the deal and what I believe. He said, it's just another science that we don't know. He says, science is something we can measure. He said, we don't know how to measure this. So one mm -hmm. day there's going to be another science. It's going to have another name. And they're going to learn how to measure that. But right now, we don't know how to measure what we're seeing. We don't know what it is. We don't know yeah. how to measure it. And that made total sense to me. And that was the inside scoop of, you know, one of the top guys out there at the very beginning. So yeah. now when all these things happen, I don't know if they're true or not. And I don't want to decipher if they are or not. Because I know how those things can be. And maybe they're totally true. Um, uh, but I just don't watch it enough to where I, at all. I don't, I don't, I don't even. So, no. um, I just want to do my thing and say, this is what I saw. And then I want to pull on people to blue rock talk or my Connie after dark or whatever show creepy hotspot and say, here's Paul, you know, what do yeah. you got? You know? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's all good. You know I mean? And just staying with, uh, Skinwalker for one moment. I mean, we had a guy come up to Bempton from California. Oh, I can't, I'm not going to say two months since, maybe a bit longer. And I've, I've spoke about it on, on here before. There's, he didn't have any great experience at Skinwalker. He'd, no. he'd done some kind of pilgrimage. He'd done Skinwalker. He'd done this Hoyabaku forest and he'd done Bempton. But just to stay with Skinwalker, he did say that he, he got as close as he could to the place. And then he went on to a, a, a further into an, onto another ranch and the police arrived. But when they realized what he was doing, they were real nice. We locals were fine. But the locals had said, it's not just there. It's happening here as well. Yeah. You yeah. Know, that's so what I, yeah. The move, the moving about, you know, and, yeah. uh, you know, I, I mean, people sort of stigmatize Bempton as though that's the only place. Right. You can go up and down coast. But right. I mean, for, for Wolflands, we're talking, we're, we're at least doing 25 miles. We've got a story last week, Connie, that, that me and Les will be visiting somewhere if we said 30 miles from Forest and Forest 30 miles from us, but we, we, it's just going to be, it's not going to be the crowning story of Wolflands, but it's just one that will help finish it off. 
I didn't sneeze I want to go. 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 Well, well, we need well, a chick with you. <laughs> yeah, well, fingers crossed. Well, she'll be there. Uh, I don't know. Back end of next week, all being well, if this guy's going to allow us, he, he'd been pinged with his COVID uh, app. Ah. So he, couldn't, he couldn't see us last week. But that's the, yeah, hence the reason we ended up at Silfo Moor talking about the 1957 Silfo saucer to a camera. I was talking to Fresh Air, uh, and which is, well, I weren't. I was talking to Les, but basically fresh air isn't it not you les sorry it sounds a bit wrong that doesn't it but, <laughs> um, so, you know he'll punch me when i see him so basically you know fingers crossed we'll get to see this other witness and get his account this uh well back end of next week so let's jump in from that have we more questions well what you were saying though was what? is it's true and i try to tell people too i'm like don't be stuck on skinwalker sometimes people have to embellish and embellish to keep their stories going where it's like no there's other places just like that they're everywhere they're yeah. everywhere they're absolutely everywhere and you know you find them or you don't or maybe you stick around long enough to notice it you know a lot of times you just might maybe you hike by it or walk by it and these spots they don't have to be out in the middle of nowhere they can be right off the highway and right in a park where you walk and hike daily or right next to the shopping center you go to yeah, no, yeah, exactly. So, creepy hotspots, the places that you visited, these, a lot of these remote areas, forests, and people have contact, reached out to you and said, look, this is going off, you know, we've got this experience, we can bring you out here. Do they ask you to keep it secret, the location? I like to keep it secret because uh, some people, it's, some things are totally secret and some are not. Um like we go to Waverly Hills, uh, and we'll if we do a haunting, Waverly Hills overnight is great. It's a, uh, it's just this huge place in Louisville, Kentucky, where I happen to grow up, and I I know that people that had it, so we can get some special private tours there. It's this huge building, if you're not sure of it, and it's a uh, you know tuberculosis. It happens this unbelievable huge haunted place, and we do a whole lot of things there. And of course, they're okay saying you know what the hot spot is, but then there's other places where people have built up these great relationships with Sasquatch or a dog man or something or whatever they they are not sure maybe even what it is, and uh, they don't want their spots known because they don't want people coming up and and doing some of the stupid things people will do, whether if they try to hurt something or let's just say they're not trying to hurt anything they want their own research but they're screwing up what you just did because if you set up like a gifting table and you set up rocks a certain way or whatever and you believe you're communicating back and forth with them with gifts or changing rocks around or whatever you're doing well you don't know that this other third party's coming in once in a while making some changes too so now it's like well who made the change or, right? or, or actually alienating what they're trying to yeah. study yeah yeah, yeah. So, and they'll do it, you know. So, yeah, it's best to keep that quiet and keep because it's about a relationship, especially with the Bigfoot. It's about a relationship with them. <laughs> I don't think the ET care. I think they're freaking sinister <laughs> and they don't care. But I think the Bigfoot is very uh, much of a relationship type situation that so you create what, with them. What, what are your views then on the the werewolf dogman type cryptid compared to the Bigfoot? Are, are, are they being seen in the same areas? Yeah, yeah. Same same areas. Um, it's, you know, it's interesting because I remember people, you know, okay, wow, Bigfoot. I never thought about even Bigfoot. And, and I was grew up in an area where they're everywhere, apparently. Never even thought about that ever until somebody had done a documentary and I was bringing in documentaries to, to one uh, a, a guy that was distributing across the world paranormal documentaries right and so somebody brought me a bigfoot one and that's where that you know turned into that i started learning about that and um then when people brought up the dog man i was just like huh because i never thought about bigfoot and then i'm like they're everywhere and then when i started hearing about dog man holy cow they're freaking everywhere too well the people i've met i've, I've met super soldiers they're super soldiers they were built they are mean they are vicious if you see one that's the last thing you'll see they're going to chew you up and spit you out and that's it and it's over and they're in the cities and they're in the mountains and they're they're everywhere right and then i've heard dog men are no they're the teachers they're the ones that love you they're they're even higher than the bigfoot and they teach you and 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 they're the anubis from the uh pyramids 
And then when I talked to you on coast, I never had an idea. I never even thought of the werewolves. Oh, wow. Duh, that makes sense. And we have one of my blue rockers, Crypt at 559. He's on YouTube. He talks about seeing one. He's in, uh, in Southern California or in California, maybe a little above Southern there, a little bit. But he, he talks about um, that he saw a, a dog man and it showed himself and made this noise. And I mean, he saw, he was like, ah, but he had said that it had shorts on and the shorts were ripped up just like where it was a human or something else with shorts on. And then, you know, maybe turned into a wolf. A dog know, man and tore up his kind of, in a way, I don't know whether it adds to per- That's crazy. Credibility. Yeah. I don't know whether that kind of story adds or removes credibility. I listened to, uh, one of the, one of these dogman podcasts, and there's a guy telling an incredible account, and of, of him and some friends seeing this thing, and, it, and it's it's really interesting. I, I can't think it were on Dogman Encounters, but I can't think of the episode as I would because people might want to listen to it because this guy talks about just being out of his neighbourhood near some fields, and I think he said there's a field full of nettles and thistles, and they've come across this thing. And it stood over one of his friends, and his friends literally, uh, everything's just gone away from him. He's absolutely terrified. He's just, you know, right. wet himself the lot. He said, but this thing's over him. Oh, because no. we, pulled a, we shouldn't have, we'd had an illegal gun, and we pulled a gun. I'm telling somebody else's story that's been on a podcast, but I just want to get to the, the quirky bit. He told this incredible story. Sure. He said, and I pulled the gun, and it looked at me, and I knew it was saying, don't even think about it. It's, but then he said... <laughs> Suddenly, we could see a row of red lights in the thistles and nettles. In in them, not above. He said thistles and like, nettles for this American is yeah, bushes, thistles, like big, long grass and nettles that sting okay. the nettles. And okay, the thank you. Spiky. So, <laughs> so he, he said it turned, looked at them, and set off running. And as it were running, all all the foliage were laying down, but yeah. it were all just coming straight back up. It were it. It was as if he weren't impacting it. But the point I'm getting at, because you've just said shorts, he told this incredible story. Then he went, when it turned, it had an earring in. <gasps> Do you know? And, 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 and for me, you was think, it the right you, ear or the left ear? I'm just well, kidding. Well, I know what you're saying. But, <laughs> but, 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 but what I'm meaning is, you know, he told this great wow. story. So then you think, is just, with some people, that guy's blown his credibility by saying that. But why would mind, he make that up? Why would he make it up? Yeah, yeah. why would he make it up? In, in, I mean, in many instances, you'd want to keep that bit quiet because you'd be thinking, nobody's going to believe this. <laughs> no, that's crazy. Right, right, jump into Les again. More questions, Les? Uh, yes. Um... Les is cute. He's so funny. His little reactions. Did you all ever get the Muppets? Did you watch the Muppet Show a long time ago? And they had the two guys up in the balcony that would make yeah. the comments yeah. and stuff. That's left yeah. down there. You all, you don't see yeah. him, but we see him. And he's making these little faces along the way. Exactly. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Connie. And <laughs> I, uh, I'm looking down my questions, uh, kindly sent uh, by uh, Deborah tonight. And I see Andy's in the uh, moderator in the chat as well. Yeah. So welcome to the show, Andy. Yeah, Andy yeah. Our, our other moderator, uh, Connie. Oh. Yeah. Deb and Andy. And Andy, yeah. And so the question is, um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, ah, here we go. This is a good one from Chris uh, from uh, Outer Limits magazine. Chris. Uh, if you're still on the uh, stream... Chris, uh, your question. I'm Hi, going Chris. to ask it. I'm going to ask it now. I am interested in Connie's opinions uh, about the claims Travis Walton saw the fire watchtower, which is actually three plus miles behind hills, uh, behind his abduction site. Does she validate claims of hoax? Um, probably you know more than that, Connie. Uh, can you answer any of that question? Does it make any sense? Translate that to English. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. You're all accents. I just yeah. It's just the way it's uh, ri- just the way it's written, uh, Connie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so do I believe in Travis's uh, story? 
basically? Uh, yeah, um... yeah, yeah, I think that's that's what we're saying. Because there's some new witnesses come forward yeah. from the, all these years on, and they're, right. they're claiming it to be the fire watchtower. The fire watchtower. Yeah. Right. Right. Does that is, so? Is 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 it clear? Does it uh, is it a hoax or is it real? I believe his story. I believe Travis. Um, I've known him for a, quite a long time, and. Um, Again, I like people that have encounters. I want to listen to people that have encounters. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great people out there that write books and and they've never seen anything. They 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 go and interview other people and they write their stories and hey, that's cool. We need people that will write <laughs> and 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 obviously that's helped the the awareness of all this stuff. But my thing is I enjoy talking to people with encounters because I have them too. And I want to, to talk with you about them and see what we figure out from them. And, and we can always relate. You can tell someone who has really had an encounter and Paul and I will discuss this because it's like, Oh, I believe you because that's how I felt when I saw that or felt that. Right. I mean, cause, cause we can't make sense of some of this stuff, but we can give you a little piece and a little piece and go, I don't know what that means, but this happened. And you know that that's when a person's telling the truth. Usually if there's a whole little storyline to it, you're like, how did you connect those dots like that? Did you do that connection yourself? Because a lot of times it's not like we would think or do or be at all. And it's just kind of like, well, I don't know what it meant or what, what really happened, but this is what I remember. And Travis, when, when I talked to him and I've talked to him uh, several times in person, as well as on air and uh, you know, the only uh, deviation to me that I've seen where he, with his story, which by the way is an important thing too, uh, when people start continuing to elaborate and elaborate and elaborate, because that's the only thing they got and they add on and add on and add on, sometimes they add on because maybe they've remembered something subconsciously that was buried. Okay, that's one thing. And, and I think that happens. Uh, Travis just had a different insight at point. And I'm just talking Travis. I'm not talking about the people around him that, you know, oh, we're going to decide to say something different. I kind of, I heard a little bit about that. And I kind of was like, uh, cause I just, Travis's story. The only thing that he came out different later was where he said, um, he said, I think they actually were helping me. I think they actually saved my life now where I think, before they took me and I didn't, you know, I thought it was not a good thing. But now I think because I was this punk, I was being, you know, show off and, and, uh, you know, I was trying to act like I was hot stuff running up to this thing. I think that because I ran up, they were trying to, you know, basically defend themselves. Like, hey, hey, get away, back off. And, and he said, I think they took me in and saved my life and then <laughs> dropped me back down. And that's and, kind of plausible, isn't it? You know, you, yeah. you, can, you can imagine him coming to that conclusion. I'm not in favour of Travis. I mean, I, I've not spoke to him at length like you have. I've spoke to him a couple of times, to be honest, in person, and I, his sincerity seems to shine through to me. Yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah. you can imagine over the years, because if this experience has happened to him, they're probably into a single day goes by that that is that not in his head. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's one of that's one of the problems with telling yeah. a story like that is all of a sudden that's who you are you are defined and you but do you, talk about it every you've, day. You've <laughs> analyzed it and analyzed it and ran it yeah. through and ran it through and you're coming yeah. up with best you, you, that particular aspect of the story, uh, you know, getting hit by that what it's like by the bolt beam of light or the bolt of light. He's probably thought a thousand times, did it? Were they attacking me? Uh, was it just some kind of defense mechanism? What what was it? And and to come up then with the analogy that. Perhaps, perhaps afterwards they were trying to heal me, trying to fix me, kind of thing. Yeah. Why not? Why? Why not? He, he, why not? He doesn't have to form those thoughts two weeks after event, a month after event, does he? Right. That's right. kind of thing that's going to take a long time to come to conclusions, and he'll still not be sure in his mind. I, I wouldn't dare try and right. think for the guy, but but he's still not hundred percent certain. Right. Right. In my opinion. Yeah. Right. No, I agree with you, and. And I guess uh, I just know the story enough that people were saying some of his outside friends that were there were saying they they were changing the story and saying we just said this. Well, why would you go that many decades just saying that? And 
why didn't you clear it at the very beginning when the sheriff yeah. was ready to, you know, throw you in prison because you killed and buried him somewhere, you know, dismembered him and, and, and buried him, you know, because where is he? What's going on? Right. It was all this like you all must have killed him yeah. kind of thing. So you'd have thought I, they'd cracked, wouldn't you? So they're, they're yeah. But uh, no, it's, it's an interesting one and a good question, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are there any more? Because. Yeah, I'm really, really conscious of the time. Uh, yeah, and we've got lots, lots of questions in for you, Connie, uh, tonight, but I don't think we'll get through them all. There's one question I want to ask. It's from uh, Lee Roscoe, and Lee is asking, yeah, hi, Lee, welcome to the show. Is, is Connie looking for Bigfoot in one part of the uh, United States or all over? You're going to love this answer. <laughs> You're going to love this because the very first time, like I said, I had been studying all sorts of things. And the, and the, the last thing I had been studying was alien abductions and was getting deep in with personally knowing Dr. David M. Jacobs, the writer of some, to, to me, my favorite a researcher of all with the abductees and the regressions and he worked with Bud Hopkins and I got to meet Bud before he had passed and David became a friend of mine and and learned so much from them I think they were the top people looking into it and, and of course uh, you know they had people above them but so when when I had when I was pulling in uh, documentaries for someone and I, and I came up across the Bigfoot thing and that's where I met the people and they took me out where they were it was actually in Alabama and amazingly enough, you know, of course, they're saying, yeah, I've been doing this 20 years. I've never seen one, but I still look and I know they're there. And, I, you know, you hear all these stories and you may never see anything ever, but you can hear them and, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, I had adventures that very first night. <laughs> but the first time I actually we were driving around the area where they believed there were two tribes and one was nicer than the other. And they had all this activity. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm just, all right, man, I'm going with you. This is great. And so I remember we were trying to find a spot that we were going to, everybody was going to put the tents up. And I remember getting out of the guy's truck. I was on the passenger side. I remember getting out of his truck. Pat Rance was his name. <laughs> and, and, and I stood outside and, and Pat was always great. He taught me, you know, everything at the beginning. And I said, I said, out loud and, and do do this like like you always want to think about your original thought and keep that in mind and print it and print it if you ever get something in your mind and you and it wasn't you it was yeah, clearly yeah, not you saying, you've not thought it yeah. you've not thought it repeat it out loud repeat it out loud so it'll help you just repeat it try to get that in your head and tell your subconscious to you know say it out loud and that's something that happened i stepped outside the second one foot hit the grass don't ask me why, but that's when it happened. And I spit out these words. I heard it and I spit it out. And it was that they are highly advanced and they're everywhere. And I had a knowing that what I had just heard and repeated, and it was just systematically. And I don't know if they wanted me to repeat it so somebody would hear me because there was a bunch of us out there, you know, a good handful of us out there. And I was, and I knew it. I, I had a knowing that I knew they were highly advanced and they were everywhere and there was nothing anybody can say different to me ever. And I also like felt where they were and this was in a forest and I, w I looked and it looked like there might have been, I don't know, you know how cheerleaders, uh, you know, there's like three and then two and then one and they're on each other <laughs> and they're, they're sitting on each other and you just can sometimes just see heads. I saw something like that and I remember even saying right after I heard that to to Pat, I said, Pat, I, I kind of think there's something over there, and it kind of looks like him. I can't, I couldn't imagine that the first second that all this stuff would start happening to me. And I said, but it looks like they've got just their heads showing, and they're kind of up against each other in a way like cheerleaders would be doing doing, doing some sort of cheerleading thing. And he goes, Yep, that sounds about right. <laughs> you know, because when you're out there, they do these kinds of things. Yep. Um, so okay. anyway, that had happened, but. That's uh, everywhere. They're everywhere. Alabama. I've been to Alabama. You know, Kentucky, uh, Colorado Rockies. Um, um, we. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other areas along the way. Because once you find a spot, you just keep going back. Yeah. <laughs> if it's there, you don't need to go somewhere else. And if you're allowed to go there, go back. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, they're I, I, everywhere. Plays a massive thing, does it? 
you get good to go back to these places, you get asked to these places because people are actually trusting you. I mean, you're on air, you've been talking to us for two hours. You've not disclosed the actual locations. No. Oh, you, you know, and you wouldn't do. Yeah, I can tell. No, that. I want to go back. I want to go yeah. back. I, you know, Let's, maybe, maybe it's a selfish thing, but I want to go back. But I don't yeah. want to. And if I told it, I wouldn't go back and nobody else would want me to go to their spot. No, you, you'd, you'd blow it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's us with some more. Yeah, uh, probably get uh, a couple more questions in before the end of the show. And its uh, I've got to say, it's been a great show tonight, guys. Wonderful, and, it? Uh, to speak. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and tonight, Paul joins my show. I do, so I yeah. You guys will be a part of it. That'll be yes. The UK time, won't it? So there'll be a lot more info. Uh, Paul's going to divulge on uh, Connie's okay, show we'll tonight. So. Okay time, yeah. we'll yes. So. Jan, then for a, a couple of hours, is it? Is it two hours? A little bit yeah. late. A little yeah. bit late at this side of the pond, but uh, yeah, for those who want to tune in, uh, go on to Connie's uh, webpage and uh, you'll be able to get all the info there. Right. So let's have a look. I think now, looking at the time. Uh, I'm sorry, all you guys that asked all these great questions. I just don't think we'll be able to get through any apart from one. And the question is, Connie, from Joey Hayes, did Connie ever meet the late, great Art Bell? Um, I didn't actually meet him in person, but I did meet him through... Um, it was either emails or Facebook, uh, where we did, uh, talk back and forth. And, um, so we messaged each other back and forth a little bit. And, um, so I did do that. The other significant thing, I mean, I'm so happy to be on coast. It's just a gift and an honor. There's no question about it. It's like, thanks God. But, uh, and I say God, believe it or not, I say God. <laughs> so does that scare some of you? Sorry about that, but um, I do believe. And when you see these um, things out there, God becomes bigger. And you have a knowing as well that there, there is uh, that, that. But um, the interesting thing, too, when he passed, I was on like the next show like George Nori had got you know talked about it but within 24 hours I was on the next show so it was it was a you know that was a big deal to me I thought oh my gosh that's a lot of responsibility to be on in the same 24 hours that that happened where people were still uh, you know asking about it and yeah. even when uh, George uh, Nori was talking about it and in and he was like texting me a little bit about it it was it was like it was just weird it was surreal kind of thing you know and of course it was a friday the 13th so i was on that next saturday so but that was quite a responsibility at that point because you know i'd love to have been interviewed by him it would have been brilliant to you know actually you know to speak to the guy but uh, obviously that's never going to happen and never did but uh, yeah it's just sad sad that's he had that voice but we'll get uh, you know I've got you. Nap got you. We'll get, we got, we got to get, uh, George Norrie to get you. I, I, think, I think I've spoken to him. Oh, you have? You've talked I, to him? I think oh. I, I, you twice. I think George. We were there. on, you were on coast twice with me. I thought just once. No, twice, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then, guys, that is a wrap. I'm afraid the two hours is up and it's been a great show. Connie Willis, thank you very much for coming on the show tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And along, yes, and along with, yeah, go on, Connie. Can I say one thing real quick? Okay. Hey, I want to invite you guys all to, uh, you know, the UK. I love it. I'm a Willis, right? And and we are from. My dad is, you know, English, and and so I've all I've never been there yet. I want to. Uh, I always kind of feel like you guys are actually family to me because of that. So, and I know you guys love all this stuff too so i hope you'll join mm-hmm. my community it is a membership one which means it is a paid because that goes toward the research toward what i'm doing toward the gear toward whatever it is and the platforms to make it happen so i hope you will join it's a safe community it's called blue rock talk also even do something called connie after dark where we do a drink and talk so uh, either one of them if you guys can join that would be great just go to connie 
and and at 7 p.m. Eastern, I think it's midnight your time, we're going to be talking with Paul on uh, Blue Rock Talk has three shows, The Creepy Hotspot, which takes you out, but then it uh, investigating. But it's also Bigfoot Friday, you know what that is, and Far Out Thursday. And so we're going to be having Paul on Far Out Thursday tonight. Yep, looking forward okay. to it. Right then. And there's a discount below, right? Uh, below? There's a discount. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll get it on there, Connie. If it's not on okay. there now, it will be on. Okay. Yeah, right. Thank you very on. much. And thanks, you guys. Uh, it's awesome. Appreciate it. See you later. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. 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 And her experiences uh, when she, uh, uh, some of the earlier experiences uh, she ex- with lights, etc. Uh, it's been absolutely fantastic. We'd like to hear more from Connie, obviously, in the future. And maybe we'll ask her if she's going, she would be willing to come back on at some time in the future. So, uh, I've got to thank all you guys now who came onto the stream. Thank you very much. And uh, we've got to thank uh, the people who... who donated through the super chat that's always great for us helps us improve what we are doing also thank you to debbie and andy for moderating tonight uh, you gave some great questions and it looks like it just leaves me to say thanks for coming and we'll see you next time bye <laughs>